Hello, uh, my name is Jim Ward, and this video will describe how to create an SQL query that will find the number and type of PDM licenses that are currently in use. The main reason for developing this query is so that the results can be saved in an SQL table to track maximum PDM license usage. This history of license usage allows for better management of PDM licenses, so a company can determine uh, when their peak usage occurs and whether they need to purchase more items. Please note that this query is based on a query that was provided in Knowledge Base S-08712. So if you want to look up for the original query, you can find it there. Please note also that this particular query may report over-report usage. The reason for that is because this query tracks who is currently logged into the database. And there are times when someone can be logged into the database, but not consuming a license, primarily if they have timed out. You know, if they, there's no user activity and they have reached the timeout period on the license manager, the license manager makes that license available uh, for, uh, for other users, but it doesn't actually pull that user out of the SQL database. So this query um, should be close though to the current license usage, but it may return a greater number than a similar query of the solid network license manager. Still, this method can be useful as the implementation is relatively easy and it doesn't require a custom program. If greater accuracy is desired, you can certainly get that by querying the solid network license manager directly, but it will take a custom program to take that information and record that into a database for later analysis. In this video, we will show how to create the query. We will show how to create the database and table to save the results of the query. We will show how to modify the query to save the results to the table. And then uh, in a later video, we will discuss how to automate the running of the query. Here is the original query from S-08712. Um, notice that the results um, are useful if it's a user who has run the query. It uses unions to put it all into a single result um, table down below, but it, it gives you, what, four rows every time you run the query. And it's, uh, it's not very useful if you're trying to uh, record the results into a table for later analysis. This is why I had to modify the original query a little bit. Now, here is the query as I have modified it. Notice what I did was I uh, declared uh, four different variables. Um, and then I used those to um, re record the different uh, query values. And finally, I did a select statement to convert them all into a single row that I, we, we can now save into it and do a table. So now for each timestamp, we have the number of cat editor licenses, the number of contributor licenses, viewer and web. Now, uh, if you'll notice, what we really have is the same query run four times. Um, and this uh, depends upon two tables, really only two tables, but this is the Canisio, one table from the Canisio Master DB database. The table is called logged in users. Uh, it uses that twice, and then it uses um, a view actually from um, the master database called SysProcesses. Now the SysProcesses, if you look to your left under system databases um, and views, system views, you come down here and you'll see there's one called SysProcesses. Here we are, sysprocesses. And then it uses um, the value from sysprocesses called um, program name. And the program name that we're looking for deals with um, EDM services. Um, now notice the difference between each of these uh, queries is the program type. Um, zero corresponds to the cat editor, one corresponds to the contributor, two corresponds to the viewer, and then finally, it uses a, a different name called the Canisio Web Server, and the program type is three to uh, get you the, the, the web users. In order for you to get this query, I would recommend that you simply pause uh, the video at this point, and you can copy this first one. A um, little bit difficult to copy it down the first time. Just be careful you do so. And then from that point, it's a matter of copy-paste to get the rest of them down 
Uh, and then, of course, you change the program type from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3, then you will need to, to modify the Kinesio web server. So it shouldn't be too bad to do that. Just doing the, the uh, query to begin with, we'll put a select statement down here. Um, and notice the convert on the get date. And the convert with that 0, what that does is tell us to only return minutes. And so under timestamp, notice that I have it down to the nearest minute. Uh, you can change that zero to other values. Uh, you can go online to find out what the possibilities are and what the results would be to get different uh, timestamps. So if you want to get down into seconds or even the milliseconds, you can do that depending upon the value here. Now that we have the query, how do we create the database and table in which to save the information? And by the way, let me tell you right now that uh, do not create a table in your vault database. Uh, create a new database so that we, you don't cause problems in your, um, in your PDM uh, database. So always create a new one to save this information. So to create a new database, we simply come up to databases, um, right click it and choose new database. Uh, you give your database a name. In my case, I'm going to call it um, analytic um, just because I'm going to be using this to, to store information for analytical processes. So and if you want to, you can go into um, options and create, um, look at your options and decide what you want. In my case, I'm just going to accept the defaults. So I will say OK. So that creates a new database. And see that here it is down here called analytics. So now inside of that database, I need to create a new table. new table and now I need to tell it which columns I need so I'll make the column names the same as as what I am uh, reporting so the first one will be timestamp and we do have to give it a data type and the data type in this case is going to be a date time the next one and by the way we do need to decide whether or not we're going to allow that one to be null I don't think I really on any of these that we will be allowing them to be null but since we're filling this up through a query, it really doesn't matter because um, we will be certain to get a value every time that we run this. So the next one is called CAD underscore editor. And uh, this will be a an integer. The next one, of course, is a contributor, also an int viewer. And then last is the, the web. So this creates the table. So now we just need to um, save this. Let's see, I believe we can select save here. And we need to give it a table name, and I will call this, um, I don't believe uh, spaces are allowed, so I'll just call it currently, currently logged in users. I'll tell it OK. So now if I look in, in my analytics at the tables, I'll see now dbo.currently logged in users. So now in order to uh, put the information from my query into that database, I'll use the insert into statement. By the way, I'm going to comment out the line that uh, puts the query here. And I'll come down here and I'll use the insert into. Um, I commented that out, out earlier. So I put in license usage history is what I called it before. So I, this does need to match. Um, so let's see, currently logged in users. So currently logged in users. Now the way I'm using this insert into, since I am filling in every column, I can just put in the values. So the values is the get date with zero, the add editor, contributor, viewer, and web. So now when I run this, it now put that into the currently logged in users. And to find that, now I can simply do a right click on the currently logged in users table and choose uh, select top thousand rows. And that puts it in here. So you see currently cat editor of one, zero, zero. Now if I log out of PDM, and run the query again. And again, let's come over here and refresh this. You see that I added a new line. I did it within a minute, but you can see within this new line, I'm no longer logged into, into um, SQL, and so it shows me as being a zero. Now we have a method to record the number and types of currently logged in users to PDM. In our next video, we will discuss how to automate 
this query.